now we will start with mesh analysis but before mesh analysis kvl is important so kvl is lower k chops voltage law which means summation of v should be equals to zero means inside a closed loop total applied voltage should be equal to the dot across resistances in this case so take very simple example suppose we are having a circuit with 10 volt of supply and there are two different resistances of 5 ohm and 10 ohm when we are finding the current value i it should be equal to simply v upon r here the value of voltage is 10 volt the sum of total resistance is 5 plus 10 it will be 10 upon 15 in ampere because the value of voltage is voltage supply is in volt and the resistance is in ohm so whenever we are applying kvl so first we have to see what is the total value of applied voltage here the applied voltage value is 10 volt so the applied voltage will should be equal to the drop across the resistances here so since we are having only single independent loop here so we can simply write i times of 5 plus i times of 10 the meaning is in the given circuit we are applying a voltage value of 10 volts and now the drop across the resistance says r multiplication of i into this resistance and multiplication of i with 10 ohm resistance so suppose we are finding the drop across this 10 ohm resistance it will be simply r into i value suppose it is r1 if you are finding the voltage drop across this resistance it will be r2 into i value so what we are trying to assume that the applied voltage that is v it should be equal to the drop across voltages i times of r2 plus i times of r1 or we can say it as v1 plus v2 the total value of v should be equal to v1 plus v2 now when this part is clear now moving towards the mesh analysis part so in mesh analysis again we have to apply kvl only the first thing is we have to identify independent meshes you can say independent loops or meshes the second thing is now we have to denote each loop with some loop current either in clockwise direction so remember that both should be either in clock direction or it should be in anti-clockwise direction suppose we are having i1 and i2 as mesh currents so next part is now we are defining this mesh as mesh 1 and this mesh as mesh 2 so then apply kvl in mesh 1 so here in the mesh 1 the applied voltage is 10 volt so we can simply write 10 volt so this should be equal to the drop across this resistance plus drop across this resistance now drop across r1 is i1 times of r1 plus drop across r2 see in this case r2 is receiving two current one is i2 going in just opposite direction as that of i1 so it should be i1 minus i2 times of r2 this is first equation and the second equation is now when we are talking about mesh 2 here in mesh 2 the applied voltage is again we are going from minus to plus of the battery so it applied voltage is again 5 it should be equals to i2 times of i3 drop across this resistance plus drop across this resistance since we are considering mesh 2 now i2 will be taken as positive so it will be i2 minus i1 times of r2 so now we are having two different equations after solving this equation we can find out the value of i1 i2 if the values of r1 and r2 r3 are given now take another example for mesh analysis so in this case we are having three different sources but the number of independent loops are only two again the same as the previous case so here we are having first mesh as mesh one and the second mesh as mesh two when we are applying kvl in first mesh in that case we can see that the applied voltage is 10 volt now this is going from minus to plus and again this i1 is going from minus to plus for 15 so it will be 10 plus 15 because both the voltages are having same polarity so minus 2 plus again it is minus 2 plus so 10 plus 15 next it should be equal to the drop across resistances so now what will be the drop across r1 it will be i1 times of r1 plus this r2 is having two currents now one is i1 one is i2 so we can write i1 minus i2 times of 
R2. So we can simply write 25, it is equals to I1 R1 plus I1 R2 minus I2 R2. This is first mesh equation for second mesh equation. Again, we can see here the current direction is going from minus to sorry plus to minus of the battery. So it is minus 15. And again, this is again coming from my plus to minus of the battery. So it is minus 5. It should be equal to the drop across resistances. So it will be I2 minus I1 times of R2 plus R3 times of I2 plus R4 times of I2. So it is minus 20. It should be equal to the drop across resistances value. So now we are having two different equations. So by solving this equation, we can find out the value of current in each loops. So suppose it is required that find the value of current. If the question is find the value of current flowing through this resistance R2. So since R2 is receiving two current, one is I1 and the second is I2. So you can either take I1 minus I2 or you can take I2 minus I1. If the current directions are different or if you are getting the negative sign, then we can say that the current directions are different what Ever we have assumed in that case. So by this we can apply the mesh analysis. Now there are many different types of circuits in mesh analysis either you are having any triangular circuit or you are having some different shapes. So no need to worry about the the complexity of circuit it will be utilizing the same thing whenever we are using the mesh analysis I am trying to make a complex circuit So now by seeing this, you can see it is very complex circuit, but again, if we are applying mesh analysis, it is very easy to solve. So just what we need to do, we need to just make three independent loops with three different mesh currents, I1, I2 and I3. Now we are having three meshes. Just apply the concept B equals to I into R. B is the applied voltage. So suppose for mesh one, the applied voltage is 10 volt. It is going from plus to minus. So we can write minus 10, it should be equal to 10 times of I1, 10 this into I1, plus 5 times of I1, minus 5 times of I2 as I2 is in opposite direction. So again, apply the same concept in each and every mesh. We can find the three different mesh equations. After solving those equations, we can find out the value of I1, I2 and I3. So just remember that we have to apply the same method that is KVR in mesh analysis. First, we have to identify the number of independent loops, then mark with different mesh currents, then find out the number of equation based on the required value of I1, I2 and I3 or it is a required number of value of unknown variables. So by modifying this circuit, if we are changing us this voltage supply with the current source, it will be very easy now. So if you assume there is any current source of 5 ampere, for example, so now since I1 is having same direction as that of 5 ampere, we can say that I1 value is 5 ampere. So one unknown is already obtained. So now we have to only find out the values of I2 and I3 by finding two different mesh equations.